Hello, I'm Diane Burns. Welcome to Next TV, change you can see. We're at the beautiful, picturesque South Shore Cultural Center. Hi, I'm Diane Burns. Welcome to Next TV, change you can see. We're here on the south side of Chicago at U.S. Cellular Field, a field of dreams for Chicago White Sox baseball fans. Today, we'll meet the woman known as the landlord of this ballpark. But first, how about a little ballpark trivia? If it takes a whole village to raise a child, it takes a village and a couple of cameras to produce our weekly series. We thought you might get a kick out of seeing our friends who work behind the scenes to bring you the people and places that educate, empower, and inspire. Roll tape. Next TV, Production Central. Rewind to my before look. Welcome to Post Production Central. This is where all the magic happens. It could be said that our next one entrepreneur for this week is on her way to doing just that. Landing some big contracts and remaining steadfast are part of the foundation for her company's success. What happens when you blend two families with seven children, mix in some cream, sugar, and lots of love? Well, it could be a reality show, but in this case, it's a recipe for success, and it's called Sean Michelle's Ice Cream. Everyone works hard, they are dedicated, and we have so much fun. Can I get an amen? Amen! <laughs> That's our show for this week. Let us hear from you. Visit changeyoucansee.com. That's our show for this week. Thanks again to the South Shore Cultural Center and the Chicago Park District for having us here to showcase this beautiful backdrop. Thank you for joining us. I'm Diane Burns. We look forward to seeing you again next week on Next TV, Change You Can See. The news at 5 p.m. with Diane Burns. Hello, everybody. I'm Diane Burns. Welcome to a special edition of Eye on Chicago, remembering John H. Johnson. This week, Chicago and the nation said goodbye to a giant in the media, a man who built an empire from scratch and a hero in the civil rights movement. All you need is lovey. <laughs> Bears fans got that lovey feeling. <laughs> you like that touch? I do. Went to a flower designing class in Chicago where the ideas are ingenious. Diane Burns solidifying our 5, 6, and 10 p.m. newscast. Well, many people in Chicago take for granted they can run a quick errand and pick up fresh fruits and vegetables in their own neighborhood. Well, a half a million people here cannot do that because they live in what's called a food desert, an isolated area with no major grocery stores, but a lot of fast food and junk food to buy on practically every corner. The trend can have dangerous consequences. To buy this head of lettuce, Dolores Wedgworth took two buses, a 45 minute ride each way with a transfer. I think it's important enough for me to go and make the initial effort to go out of the neighborhood because if I eat just fast food all week, I can tell I'm sluggish. She is a working senior, a teacher at a preschool. Wedgworth is among the half million people living isolated in one of the food deserts in Chicago. Mostly on the south side and west side, almost all of them African American. A liquor store is at every turn, as well as a blinding array of fast food. And many people buy meals there and at the gas station. If you live in these communities, you're more likely to suffer from hypertension, diabetes, uh, certain kinds of cancer, so it's very serious. MG Research looked at all 18,000 blocks in the city. The study found that these fresh fruits and vegetables are very difficult to find in the food deserts because many of the major grocery chains have fled the inner city. You can buy french fries, but you can't buy fresh potatoes. You get all the ketchup, but you can't get fresh tomatoes. I think there's something wrong with that. Congressman Rush saw the trend firsthand in his first district and pushed for lawmakers in Washington to acknowledge the food desert with a designation in the 2008 Farm Bill to help Chicago pay for solutions. And it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, government, you know, we happen to be, it's a real slow process. Um, however, I feel that we've brought enough people to the pay table that are committed to this project. Alderman Lorino's City Council Committee puts together the Grocery Expo every year, a report that offers a list of attractive properties for locations in the city where a grocery store could open with perhaps a chance for success. The city hopes to lure independent, medium-sized stores to the deserts at a time when it is critical, since childhood obesity is reaching the epidemic stage, and studies show that healthy eating promotes better learning. 
It's shameful, a death sentence to generations of, of people. Uh, and it shouldn't be that way. And it's got to stop. The Chicago City Council is also reaching out to a group in Pennsylvania that helped tackle the food desert problem in Philadelphia to conduct more research for a solution in Chicago.